How can something like this enhance your performance in something like this? The list of the people I train who have improved their strength simply by getting more flexible is getting so long that I had to do a video about it. So in this video, we'll explore three ways that flexibility training increases strength. The first way is simply by increasing the extensibility of the antagonist muscles of a movement. This increases the force that you can apply simply by reducing the restriction that you get from your own body. Now, this might sound a bit complicated, so let's see how this works in practice. The force you can apply on a movement, aka your strength, is a result of many different parameters. One of them is the synergy of your muscles. The muscles that are involved in each movement can be categorized as agonists and antagonists. In strength training, the agonist muscles are the ones that contract to produce the movement, and the antagonists are the exact opposites. For example, on a bicep curl, the agonists are the biceps and the antagonists are the triceps. In another example, in a knee extension, the agonists are the quadriceps and the antagonists the hamstrings. When the antagonist muscles are tight, they restrict movement. For example, on the fire hydrant, no matter how strong your glutes are, if your antagonists, aka your adductors, are tight, you won't be able to lift your leg high enough. Think of your adductors as a chain with limited length that when it reaches maximum, it just blocks your movement. It's like fighting your own body. And of course, this leads to low force output on these end ranges and zero force output on ranges you can't even reach. On another example, on the leg raises, no matter how strong your hip flexors are, if you have limited range on the hamstrings, your movement will be blocked. Therefore, the net force you can apply in the overall movement is next to zero. Overall, the interplay of the agonist and antagonist muscles is present in every single movement of our lives to some extent. Therefore, by increasing your strength, you indirectly enhance your performance simply by minimizing the limitations imposed by one muscle group on the other. Now, let's move to the second way that flexibility training increases strength. This second way has to do with the fact that in every movement and exercise, there is an ideal position and range on which you can generate the most strength. If you're unable to function within those ranges, no matter how strong you are, your force output is reduced. To give some examples on the bench, the ideal position to apply force to the barbell is in an arched position. This position creates the optimal mechanics to engage the pecs more. This way, the less you're able to arch your back, aka the less flexible spine you have, the more you put yourself at a mechanical disadvantage by shifting the weight to smaller muscle groups. In another example, on the squat, the ideal mechanics are achieved with a reasonable depth, the knees slightly turned out, and the back straight. This position requires a certain level of flexibility on the soleus and adductor muscles. If you can't take that position, not only do you increase the risk of injury, but also limit the overload ability of this exercise. This leads to short and long-term reduction of your force output in this movement. And this effect is much more pronounced in sports. For example, javelin throwers demonstrate some serious upper body flexibility during the so-called power position right before the throw. Although this is a sport of power, even a slight flexibility limitation here would alter the mechanics of the final steps before the throw and significantly impair the power output of the athlete. So, to recap the second way, increasing your flexibility lets you operate within the ideal ranges which optimizes your mechanics and increases your ability to exert force and power. The third and final way is that most of the modern methods to increase flexibility include isometric contractions at the end range of the targeted movements. This way, by training flexibility, you also directly increase your strength too. More specifically, four of the methods that I'm currently using on my programs include isometric contractions either at the end of the passive or active range. This end range strength development covers missing links on your overall strength profile. These missing links come mainly because traditional strength training focuses on increasing the mid-range of most movements. This is fine but creates some holes in your overall strength and some level of instability at the end range positions. So this third way is all about using flexibility training to increase your end range strength, which is the missing link of the strength profile of most people and creates stability at wider ranges. If you want to find out more on how to use this active method to increase both your strength and flexibility at the same time, you can watch this next video. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.